dive into the fascinating life of Charlie Munger. Discover his impressive net worth, learn about his age, and meet his family, including his wife, children, and daughter. Explore his luxurious car collection and stunning house. This comprehensive biography offers an exclusive look at the life and achievements of one of the world's most renowned investors. Don't miss out on this detailed exploration of Charlie Munger's extraordinary journey. Charlie Munger was an American businessman, investor, and philanthropist. He was vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, the conglomerate controlled by Warren Buffett. Born January 1, 1924, Omaha, Nebraska, United States. Died November 28, 2023, age 99 years, Santa Barbara, California, United States. Spouse, Nancy Berry, M. 1956-2010, Nancy Huggins, M. 1945-1953. Children, Emily Munger Ogden, Molly Munger, Wendy Munger, Charles T. Munger, Jr., Philip R. Munger, Barry A. Munger. Education, Harvard Law School, 1948, Harvard University, University of Michigan, California Institute of Technology. Parents, Florence Munger, Alfred C. Munger. Charlie Munger net worth $2.6 billion. Early life and education. Charles Thomas Munger was born on January 1, 1924, in Omaha, Nebraska, to Florence Tootie, Russell, and Alfred Case Munger, a lawyer. As a teenager, he worked at Buffett and Son, a grocery store owned by Warren Buffett's grandfather, Ernest P. Buffett. His grandfather, Thomas Charles Munger, was a state representative and later a U.S. District Court judge appointed by Theodore Roosevelt. He enrolled in the University of Michigan, where he studied mathematics. During his time in college, he joined the fraternity Sigma Phi Society. In early 1943, a few days after his 19th birthday, he dropped out of college to serve in the U.S. Army Air Corps, where he became a second lieutenant. After receiving a high score on the Army General Classification Test, he was ordered to study meteorology at Caltech in Pasadena, California, the town he was to make his home. Through the GI Bill, Munger took a number of advanced courses through several universities. When he applied to his father's alma mater, Harvard Law School, the dean of admissions rejected him because Munger had not completed an undergraduate degree. However, the dean relented after a call from Roscoe Pound, the former dean of Harvard Law and a Munger family friend. Munger excelled in law school, becoming a member of the Harvard Legal Aid Bureau and graduating in 1948 with a J.D. magna cum laude. In college and the army, he developed an important skill, card playing. He used this in his approach to business. What you have to learn is to fold early when the odds are against you, or if you have a big edge, back it heavily because you don't get a big edge often. Opportunity comes, but it doesn't come often, so seize it when it does come. He also used the card analogy to explain his approach to investing. He maintained that treating the shares of a company like baseball cards is a losing strategy because it requires one to predict the behavior of often irrational and emotional human beings. Investment Career Munger moved with his family to California, where he joined the law firm Wright and Garrett, later Music, Peeler and Garrett. In 1962, he founded and worked as a real estate attorney at Munger, Tolls and Olson LLP. He then gave up the practice of law to concentrate on managing investments and later partnered with Otis Booth in real estate development. When he met Buffett over lunch at the Omaha Club, the two began talking about investments and never stopped. In 1962, Munger partnered with Jack Wheeler to form Wheeler, Munger, and Company, 
an investment firm with a seat on the Pacific Coast Stock Exchange. According to Buffett's essay The Super Investors of Graham and Doddsville, published in 1984, Munger's investment partnership generated compound annual returns of 19.8% during the 1962-75 period, compared to a 5% annual appreciation rate for the Dow. He wound up Wheeler, Munger, and company in 1976, after losses of 32% in 1973 and 31% in 1974. Munger was previously the chairman of Wesco Financial Corporation, now a wholly owned subsidiary of Berkshire Hathaway. The acquisition of this company was controversial following accusations that Buffett's company, Blue Chip, bought Wesco shares to defeat an impending merger between Wesco and Financial Corporation. Wesco began as a savings and loan association, but eventually grew to control Precision Steel Corporation, Court Furniture Leasing. Kansas Bankers Surety Company, and other ventures. Wesco Financial also held a concentrated equity portfolio of over $1.5 billion U.S. dollars in companies such as Coca-Cola, Wells Fargo, Procter & Gamble, Kraft Foods, U.S. Bancorp, and Goldman Sachs. Munger believed that holding a concentrated number of stocks that he knew extremely well would in the long term produce superior returns. Personal life. In 1945, while studying at Caltech, Munger married Nancy Huggins, daughter of Frederick R. Huggins and Edith M. Huggins. She was a Pasadena native who had been Munger's sister's roommate at Scripps College. They had three children Wendy Munger, a former corporate lawyer, trustee of Stanford University, and trustee of the Huntington Library, Molly Munger a civil rights attorney and funder of a ballot initiative to raise California taxes for public education, and Teddy Munger, deceased, leukemia, age nine. After Munger's divorce, he remarried within a couple of years to Nancy Berry, daughter of David Noble Berry Jr. and Emily Havener Berry. They had four children, physicist and Republican activist Charles T. Munger Jr., Emily Munger Ogden, Barry A. Munger, and Philip R. Munger. Munger also had two stepchildren from his second marriage, William Harold Borthwick and David Borthwick. On July 22, 2002, Munger's first wife, Nancy Huggins Freeman, died of cancer at age 76. On February 6, 2010, Munger's second wife, Nancy Barry Munger, died at home at age 86. Munger was a Republican and provided his opinions on a number of political topics, including the policies of the Trump administration. Munger stated he was not a normal Republican, for example advocating Medicare for all as a fix to the U.S. healthcare system, saying I think we should have single-payer medicine eventually. Munger repeated his sentiments in another interview praising Singapore's single-payer system in contrast to the U.S. insane system which is a national disgrace. In his fifties, after a failed eye cataract surgery that rendered his left eye blind, Munger had his left eye removed due to severe pain. When doctors told him he had developed sympathetic ophthalmia, which could lead to blindness in his remaining eye, Munger started taking braille lessons. The eye condition eventually receded, and he kept eyesight in his right eye for the rest of his life. Munger died at a hospital in Santa Barbara, California, on November 28, 2023, at the age of 99, 34 days shy of his 100th birthday. In the statement announcing his death, Warren Buffett said, Berkshire Hathaway could not have been built to its present status without Charlie's inspiration, wisdom, and participation. Other prominent figures in the American business community who issued statements in Munger's memory include Microsoft founder Bill Gates, Apple CEO Tim Cook, Chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase Jamie Dimon, Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan and hedge fund manager Ray Dalio.